Hello, in this section I'm going to talk about maxima and minima. To kind of give you an idea, essentially we just look at a graph of an equation. We can call this one uh, y equals f of x. As you can notice, this whole function is continuous on its entire domain, uh, but its range is also uh, minus infinity to infinity. Now as we look at kind of like this graph and um, we see that there are these little peaks and valleys like right here, right there, right there, and like right there. So what we can do about these graphs or these points is that we can classify them. So like for example, we know that that's a max. We know that that's a max. This right here is a min. And this right here is also a min. Now technically these values are relative maxes and relative minimums because we have that the domain, or not the domain but the range, is all real numbers. Basically implying that this is not the largest max, this is not the largest or smallest min. So in that case we have to be careful with that. Now one thing that we can note is that for values that are less than this point right here where we have, we have that this is where the derivative would be uh, positive. But then we have that, for instance, um, for values that are between here and here, we have that that's the, where the derivative is negative. So essentially we have that um, a maximum is when we go from positive to negative, and a minimum is when we go from negative to positive. But just to clarify, we have that f prime of x greater than zero, that implies that f is increasing. If we have that f prime of x is less than zero, that implies that f is decreasing. Now furthermore, we have that if f prime of x is equal to zero, that's where f is constant, and that's where you have those horizontal tangents. Now in this case, um, we're looking for maxes and mins, so let's try an example. So <clears throat> consider the function f of x is equal to negative x cubed um, minus 2x squared plus 15x plus 10. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to just find the relative extremas. So I know that the domain for this function is all real numbers. And I know that the range for this function is also all real numbers. Meaning that anything that I find is actually relative and not uh, absolute. So we take the first derivative and we get negative 3x squared minus 4x plus 15. The next step is that <clears throat> you want to set this to zero. So you have negative 3c squared minus 4c plus 15 is equal to zero. Now what I'm doing here is I'm finding my critical points. Critical points are where the first derivative is either equal to zero or it's undefined. But since we're trying to look for relative mins and maxes, um, it has to be defined. So this function, if we go ahead and we rewrite it as 3c squared plus 4c plus 15, not plus 15, but minus 15, we can actually go ahead and just uh, factor. So we can factor by saying, well, 3 times negative 15 is negative 45, but break that down into 9 and minus 5, and this will help. So we have 3c squared plus 9c minus 5c minus 15 is equal to 0. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell us that we have 3 times c times c plus 3 minus 5 times c plus 3 is equal to 0. What this does is it gives us that 3c minus 5 
and then c plus 3 is equal to 0. So that means that our critical points are c equals 5 thirds and c equals negative 3. Now the next thing to do is to basically just classify these respectively. <clears throat> now to do that we do a first interval line test. So we have that the interval line test is where we just basically just set up our interval line and our critical points. So the idea is that you want to have values that are between greater and less than. So a good one would be uh, 0 and uh, let's see <clears throat> we could probably just do 2 and then maybe like negative 4. Now if we plug in these values back into the first derivative keep in mind that the first derivative for this equation is f prime of x equals to 3 um, well we could say 3x plus 5 now um, so like 3x minus 5 times x plus 3 okay so if we plug in 2 basically we have that that's going to be positive positive so that's going to be positive if we plug in 0 that's going to be negative but if we plug in um, actually you know what this function actually had a minus sign that I forgot about so there's a minus sign so yeah when we plug in 0 that's going to be positive and when we plug in 2 that's going to be negative okay so sorry be careful with that so if we plug in um, negative 4 well we have that's going to be positive negative uh, negative let's see so negative times a positive is negative but then times uh, this one should be let's see actually this is negative negative so yeah um, for those that are wondering what I'm doing I'm doing where we plug in negative 4 and you get negative times 3 times negative 4 minus 5 and then you get uh, minus 4 plus 3 uh, all of this is going to be uh, actually it's going to be less than zero yeah so we're going to get negative so we have negative 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 which means that the behavior of the graph looks something like this so what that means is that negative three is a minimum so we have that this is a min and we have that this is a max. Now the next step is to basically just figure out what is negative 3 when we plug in uh, that into the original function and what is 5 thirds when we plug it into the original function. So let's actually go ahead and do that uh, where we plug it in. So um, yeah we're gonna need our Texas instrument calculator okay so we'll go ahead and we plug in uh, negative 3 so we have negative negative 3 and that's cubed and then we have um, minus 2 times uh, negative 3 squared plus 15 times negative 3 plus 10 okay and we get minus 26 so that means that we have minus 26 for our minimum and then we just need to plug in 5 thirds okay so <clears throat> Uh, let's actually just go ahead and copy this right here and what we can do is just like insert
Okay, almost done. Okay, so we get 670 over 27, but what does that reduce to? 24.814. Okay, so let's actually just go ahead and say 24.8148. That was um, 24.81. Okay, now there is a way that you can actually find uh, these values. So like if, for example, you were to plug it in, um, you could actually just go ahead and do second trace, uh, let's say for example, maximum. So I know that there's a max there, so I just need to tell it to go there, go there, hit enter, and yeah, so it gives us the same thing. Um, and then of course, uh, five over three, um, <clears throat> that is one and two thirds. And then similarly, we can do the same thing for the min. Now, the last thing of which that we can look at, for example, is to find the largest height. For, let's say that we're looking at the position function, negative uh, 16 t squared uh, plus 96 t plus 80. Now, we know that, for example, that this thing uh, has an initial velocity. So we know that the this is the initial velocity. And this right here is the initial height. OK, so in this case, um, we have that all that we need to do is just find the derivative. So we have s prime of t equals to negative 32t plus 96. But then we need to go ahead and set this equal to, um, to 0. And we get that this is going to give us uh, negative 32c equals to negative 96. But divide by negative 32. And basically, you're going to get that c is equal to positive 3. So we have that the solution is positive 3 or 3 seconds. So we just need to plug in uh, 3 into that equation. So we have negative 16 times 3 squared plus 96 times 3 uh, plus 80. So this is going to be negative 16 times 9 plus um, 288 plus 80. And then we have that this is going to be negative uh, 144. So we have negative 144 plus 288 plus 80 is equal to 324. Now, in this case, we have that basically the maximum height is 324 feet after three seconds. Now, one thing that you should take into consideration is that the model, if you graph it, it looks something like this, where you have that the model looks something like that, where you have that this right here is after just three seconds. So that's 324. But my point being is that this is not only the largest, or this is not only just the relative max, but this is actually an absolute max because you have that it goes nowhere else. So in this case, it'll have to be the largest max or the absolute maximum. Now you can actually see that demonstrated in this graph over here in desmos.com where I typed in the function as a function of x. I think you can do function of t as well. 
Um, but see like how we have that this function as it was um, like as it started we had at 80 feet initially but you had that it increased it kept increasing towards uh, 3 where it in fact has the largest max then it keeps on going up into the point that it hits the ground which it actually hits the ground at 6.742 seconds so this thing is only in the air for um, about less than seven seconds so you can see that yeah that it's basically increasing but it decreases as it moves away from three now when we learn more higher order derivatives we'll basically learn that as <clears throat> t approaches three it's actually going to slow down but then we have that it's going to speed up after three to, and then it's going to start to slow down as it impacts the ground at um, so we said uh, six point uh, well it was six point seven okay so in this case like yeah we can use calculus to figure out like what is the maximum height as it relates to applications okay but for that matter you should be able to apply um, the same ideas for let's say like any type of problem so for example if you know that there's like let's say like a refinery and you have that this is like eight miles and then you have like that that this over here is let's say like 10 miles then if you wanted to build let's say like a pipeline from here to here but you wanted to save the most amount of money well in that case you would have to build a pipeline that would go underwater and then you would have another that would go along the shore meaning that you would have to model it using a right triangle so in this case uh, this would be um, <clears throat> this would be the square root of x squared plus 64 and this over here would have to be 10 minus x so essentially you'd be looking at a function of which would have the cost times 80, uh, 8 squared plus x squared plus a second cost times 10 minus x. You can actually figure out like what is the smallest cost in this case. So in actuality, you're looking for the minimum as it relates to a question like this. Um, so you'll see that as we move on that you'll be able to solve problems like this okay but you should really give this one a try I mean if you want me to give you some figures I mean we can use that C1 is uh, let's say like 5 million and then we can say that C2 is like uh, 2 million and then we can try to see like you know how much will our oil pipeline uh, be if we were going to do this.